Hello everyone from Neurographic Americas. We are happy to have you here today in the St. Patrick's Day. We understand that most of you probably celebrating, but we're celebrating in our own way as well. With our very unique class, um, uh, we invited a very special person, Olga Scher. She's an attorney and also president of Antinanka Earth Art School. She's going to talk about her concept of not all schools have walls. And then we're going to do some practice with me as instructor of Neurographica 2018 and the president of Neurographica Americas. Uh, I'm going to walk you through the process of how you can work with kids uh, using the concept of not all schools have walls. Let me just welcome you to our school first. and talk about Neurographica Americas a little bit. So our school is dedicated to a um, very new method called Neurographica. It was born in Russia in 2015 by very talented uh, artist, architect, psychologist, and philosopher, Pavel Piskarev. The method was born in Russian language and um, Right now, it became viral all over the world. The method is spreading with the speed of light. And what we see right now, people are teaching in Spanish, people are teaching in French, people are teaching in Hebrew. And we believe right now it's a perfect time to start teaching in English and spread the method all over the world because we know that most of the world speaks English. It doesn't matter where you are, in China, or if you are in Europe somewhere, in France or Germany, everyone speaks English. And that makes it easier for us to reach out the majority of people throughout the planet of Earth and uh, spread the news, spread the great news that Neurographica is the um, very powerful way of addressing your inner limitations, working through them, and also modeling your life plan. So that's the whole idea of Neurographica is a method. And we have a school uh, uh, forming. It's still in the process of being formed. Uh, it's gonna be a non-profit organization. I'm gonna be a president of this organization. We have a board of five people and uh, 16 active members, um, participating members, and most of them are instructors and specialists of Neurographica, and some of them are artists that also going to be teaching within our school. Um, the reason we want to spread out uh, the method beyond Neurographica is because we believe that creativity is uh, the major point in this whole uh, approach, this whole methodology. Creativity, appreciation of the beauty, aesthetics, right? And we, we even call ourselves aesthetic coaches. Uh, we really want to uh, spread it as much as we can and also involve people who work very close with kids. We believe that our, at, at, in our difficult times of technology where all kids are attached to their phones, to their computers, there is no time for kids to spend time actually using mind-body connection mind body and it's not only about drawing it's also about doing some other modalities like woodworking or let's say uh, using clay or traveling to the woods and setting their own fire and trying to learn human skills of survival we are totally lacking at this point um this modalities because in the modern world kids don't even know where the milk is coming from uh, if you tell them milk coming from cow, I, I don't think 100% of kids would, uh, would be sure that that's the case. They would question it. So uh, that's the idea for us to uh, spread the news, uh, bring uh, people who are activists uh, in the movement for kids empowerment and also artists who are ready to share their modalities with the rest of the world. And today we're inviting as I said, a very special person, Olga Scher. Olga is an attorney. Olga is the president of Antinanka Earth Art School. And I'm going to come back to um, stop sharing and come back to uh, major screen. And I'm going to invite Olga Scher 
I'm going to pin her to the screen so we can all see this her beautiful face. And uh, let Olga speak. Olga, welcome. So nice to have you today with us. Thank you so much, Margarita. Thanks so much for your wonderful introduction and Thank for you. giving me the opportunity to be here with you today. It's a big honor. Thanks for awesome. everyone. For, for Same was for us, so you know. Thank you, Colette. <laughs> And um, I love the point that you made about empowering the kids, you know, because that's our passion too. And it's so true, you know, kids nowadays are so different from our generation. They are really bright, brilliant kids, very sharp, much more intelligent, I think, than what we were during our childhood. But they have a different way to communicate. They have totally different modes of interaction and I think some values being lost there with them not being exposed to all of this real life experiences where a lot of experiencing is happening through technology. So this is what Auntie Nanfa does as well, you know, and I think that's a huge connective media between neuro, neurographic art classes and the, your beautiful organization and Antinanco because we're kind of working in the same direction. So uh, just to say a few words about our organization, Antinanco Earth Art School, and maybe I can put up a slide now if it's okay, just so you can see. Um, we are a, uh, not a very usual type of school. We provide education and experiences outside of the classroom walls. And many of our programs take place outdoors and in nature, and all of them take place in a very warm and structured environment, allowing for initiatives, interactions, and experiments. Um, so we teach kids and adults, not just through lecturing, or feeding them information, but by providing them with a safe container and a very gentle guidance and support where they can come to their own intuitive conclusions and realizations because there's much more value in that when they go through that process on their own. So instead of teaching them one specific subject like math or engineering or coding, our programs really focus on equipping them with life values and practical skills, developing critical thinking and analysis, developing independent propensity uh, for learning new skills from, for life, you know, developing that learning mindset so they can employ it through their life at, during all situations, cooperation and compassion, art of the dialogue and communication, respect for elders, respect for nature. Uh, so some examples of the programs are nature explorations, like Margarita mentioned, we do survival training where they would go in nature and build shelters and make fires without matches, adjust to temperatures. Also uh, building teamwork exercises, cooking, arts, uh, neurographic classes are a wonderful modality and is one of our favorites. Kids absolutely love it. So this year we offer over 30 programs domestically and six programs internationally. And they also include a strong um, community service component where kids go out and work on community projects and uh, help different communities and also get credit for, uh, for their schools, for their work. Uh, our programs are not structured by age, as many other schools do. This is kind of unusual, and uh, we get a surprising reaction from many parents when we say, you know, it's okay, you know, you can come too. The siblings can come too. Uh, and... Um, there's a lot of value in that, we think. We always encourage parents, grandparents, siblings to come and participate. And the philosophy behind that is twofold. First off, we see a big value in mentorship. I feel that millions of kids across the US can benefit from greater guidance 
in areas of life and learning. And our elders have such a lifetime's worth of experience, but often they lack outlets through which to share their wisdom with the kids. Because look at our culture, right? The communities are segregated, parents are so busy, kids are busy, all of the structured activities and tutorships. And uh, where the grandparents, they usually live in over 55 communities separate, have their own lifestyles. So the opportunities for interactions are very minimal. And that's what we are trying to change a little bit. You know, even if we plant tiny seeds in people's uh, perspective uh, around that subject, we think that would already be very valuable. Like in uh, indigenous cultures, the value of mentorship has always been widely recognized as indispensable part of youth development. So I think we can all benefit from their wisdom. And you know, when grandparents come to our classes for kids, so much magic happens. It's really, it just like brings tears to the eyes because those interactions are really, really uh, special. The second part of this aspect is that having parents participating along with kids um, adds an incredible value to happy parenting. Because what is the parenting really about? It's really about connections, right? It's a very dynamic and interactive process and it constantly morphs and shape shifts continuously as both parents and children grow into it. And sometimes children grow faster than adults. They are much more flexible than us. And uh, sometimes we do, you know, it takes us a much more effort to adjust and adapt. I feel that's why many conflicts between parents and teenagers occur, you know. We love our kids when they're tiny and innocent and helpless, but then they grow up and they tell us, who are you, you know, we want to do things our own way. And we need to be flexible enough to adjust to that. It's not easy. Um, so to establish and maintain strong connections with our kids, we really need to practice this adaptability and patience, of course, and flexibility and the skills of listening. And listening is so important. Like I often, I'm a mom of two, and I often catch myself in situations where one of my kids would come over and start telling me some story or asking a question or sharing something that happened in school. And what am I doing at a time? I'm super busy preparing something or cooking or entertaining guests or laundry, whatever. And then I catch myself, oh my God, how much attention am I dedicating to this kid right now? Is it like 5% of my attention or 20% of my attention? I'm not really being present for that. So when this realization comes, uh, the thing that we can do, there are actually two things that we can do. First up, first thing is we can just stop what we're doing and dedicate our full attention to listen wholeheartedly to what it is being communicated to, to us. Um, sometimes it's not possible, you know, if, we, if I'm driving a car and need to pay attention to GPS, um, then I would make a mental note to come back to this when I can be 100% present. So I can really pay attention to what is happening in the child's life because apparently it's something important that they decided to share it with me. So classes like Neurographica allow a perfect opportunity for that because when kids and parents work on the same project, creating art in the container which does not put any pressure in them, it's so easy for a child to come uh, to, to share, you know, things start coming true, which usually uh, do not because there is no space for them in our busy lifestyle. So that's just absolutely wonderful. Um, and another thing I wanted to say, I mean, that's how we instill values in kids. They do not really learn these values in school. I mean, there's very little um, value in sitting in the classroom and being told you have to be patient, you have to be responsible, you have to be compassionate because they really model this behavior from us, from the environment. And that is the topic that I raised recently in my group on Facebook, Nature Spirit Children. Um, 
and uh, many, many parents gave such great responses to this topic. And you can join if you like Nature uh, Spirit Children on Facebook, that's our group. Um, yeah, so many good topics are being discussed there. Um, so we are the first channel of instilling those values in our kids. I mean, even with the peer pressure and social media and all of the crazy commercials, we as parents are the most important influence on them. And if the values instilled through this connection and communication and doing things together are strong, kids will grow very grounded and confident, you know, and will be able to um, withstand all of this outer challenges that they encounter through life. Uh, it's another thing with uh, neurographic and other art classes is that parents can uh, utilize it as modality for questioning process. And the questioning process is one of the best tools to uncover gaps in awareness. And we all have gaps in awareness. Kids have them, adults have them. Uh, so it's something that we do not know, you know, things that we do not know. And sometimes we don't even realize that we do not know them. So when we draw in together with our kids, we can ask questions. We can ask, what is it that you're drawing? Do you know what it will be? And also don't forget the self-expression is a learned skill sometimes kids do not know how to start a conversation uh, so that's another thing I'm just uh, you know digressing um, always important to look for those nonverbal cues with kids you know but during the art process it's so easy to ask these questions and prompt this process of deep sharing so when we ask that question what is it you're drawing and what do you think you will be making today uh, they would not always know, you know, because sometimes we start making something and we have no idea what the end result will be. So at that moment when the child says no, you have hit the edge. You have hit the gap in awareness. And this is the most crucial moment that happens because the child at that moment accepts that he doesn't know something. And here, the right question determines everything. It's so easy at that moment to step in within your parents' authority and tell them, oh, I think this would be this, or encourage you to make this, and give them all of other, all kinds of tips and suggestions. But that's not the value of the exercise. The value of the exercise is gently prompt the child to come to their own realization, and to, to their own decision. So, and that, when that happens, that means that the child actually looked at his drawing much deeper than before. So next time when they begin to create something in any kind of a modality, not necessarily just in this modality, the depth of the imprint, imprint will remain with them. And that's how we build awareness in humans. So the lots of lots of great tools in this process and with that I will open the floor to Margarita because I know she prepared a very beautiful um, uh, practice for us today I'm sorry I totally forgot to take the screen share off but uh, hey Cindy good to see you here if you guys have any questions feel free to ask I think we have um, a chat option here, right, Rita? So people can just type in their uh, yes. responses um, or questions. And uh, I will let you take over from here. Thanks so much for having me. Uh, Olga, for one, one second, maybe somebody uh, has a question already. I think okay. it's a wonderful time to ask questions. So everyone, you can unmute yourself and ask uh, or is there anything that might interest you during her presentation? Thank you. I also posted links in the chat for Antinanko and for our Facebook group, Nature Spiritual. Yeah, thank you so much, Olga. So, uh, you know where to find Olga in case if you don't have questions right now? But if you do, please ask. 
I hear you. Thank you for participating. Yay, I'm so happy. Yay. All right. All right. So let me take the floor from Olga. Olga, thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, I hope you can see the bus uh, drawing together. Uh, but uh, it, it was a special treat, really. I appreciate it. Olga is a very busy mom and very busy president of her school. So thank you so much. All right. So I'm going to mute everyone again. And I'm going to go back and uh, share with you um, a short video. Uh, I had a class in December at Antinanka Earth Art School uh, where we were drawing Christmas tree. It was a very special class. We had a lot of kids. We had animals uh, walking around the floor, stepping on our drawing. Uh, it was just so much fun. And to be honest, again, what Olga said, um, it's very important that kids and parents work together on a project. Uh, and that's exactly what was going on. You're gonna see in a short video. You know, there was like so much love, so much sharing. Kids were sharing to adults and adults were supporting their kids, strong together. All of this creates this beautiful environment of learning for kids, safe environment. And adults also get feedback from kids right? They also uh, get appreciation, love. Um, all of this creates this mutual environment of love. And exactly what I'm going to do right now, just to sh share with you the short video so we can watch it. Um, let me see where it is. Um, just give me one second. I'm going to share that. Um, One second. I prepared, but for some reason it's not shown right now. Um, okay, let me stop sharing and I'm going to reshare screen. Yes. <laughs> Let's watch. All right, um, I hope it was visible to everyone. Um, my stepdaughter actually taped the whole show. She put it together and uh, shared it with us. She's gonna be a professional filmmaker. I'm very proud of her. Um, so now I think it's a perfect time to get to the practice. All right, so I'm gonna be switching my screen. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm gonna be sharing my screen, my drone board, and you please prepare um, uh, a paper, it doesn't have to be professional paper, any paper you can draw on, markers and color pencils.
For one second, I'm going to disappear and reappear again. All right. All right, here's my drone board and I hope you are joining with me and you're gonna be um, uh, drawing with me. Uh, what I really want to focus today on, how we can actually draw together with kids, right? And it doesn't have to be very complex. It can be very easy way of uh, starting very special communication with kids. And right now I'm sharing an album of pretty large size, right? If you look at that, um, I'm showing uh, in, in the mirror way. <laughs> um, I'm showing nine inch by 12 inch. Um, let me see if I can share like that. Yeah, I mean, it's just uh, the, the way the camera is set up. It's just like that. But you don't have to really use this large uh, paper. What you could do if you have a large album, you can just tear a page and um, uh, use just a half of that, or you could use smaller album and um, uh, use a smaller paper for smaller kids because uh, some uh, 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 little kids, they don't have a capacity to hold attention for a long time. So you could use something smaller like that, right? Um, that would give them an ability to focus more. Because sometimes when we have a large paper, they get kind of, well, I don't want to use words scared, but overwhelmed. Uh, and in order for them to stay focused, I would suggest using smaller album or tearing off um, this paper and cutting it in half, right? And you can make the cutting is very beautiful, just like that, right? For Mother's Day, kids like to do some projects and making it beautiful and so forth, right? And what you could also do, you could use some toys. You could put toys around. Um, Working on the floor, what I noticed that kids love uh, to do our projects on the floor rather than sitting uh, on their chairs at the table. Some kids love that, but when you do it on the floor, it gets more personal for some reason. And we've seen it in, um, in the video of Antinaka, everyone was sitting on the floor and kids just totally enjoyed it. It gave them better communication with animals if you have animals in the house. Um, beautiful cats sometimes come. Cats, for some reason, they love Neurographica. Uh, some of our teachers, they have cats and uh, they've been posting pictures of, of cats seeing right on top of Neurographica draw. What it tells us that Neurographica creates a zone of comfort that, any, that even animals can recognize, okay? So let's just get to the drawing. And I'm gonna be using a smaller pad, right? So to give you a total uh, vision of what you can do with your kids. So for that, I, I just chosen, uh, I've chosen the subject that really, I think important to every mother, right? Uh, or father, uh, me, me as a mother and my kid, or if kid draws, then me and my mom, or me and my father, right? How can I graphically show connection and, and um, see what's going on between two of us? right? Um, it's, it's the simplest way of doing it, but let's say you can make it more complex. Um, you can uh, actually draw the whole family, right? Uh, let me just quickly show you graphically and then I'll turn the page and uh, we're going to start drawing. But just to show you graphically what can be done here uh, when I get the focus of my camera. You know, sometimes camera needs adjustment. Um, uh, the simplest way if kids, if, if your kid is drawing, they can show themselves as a circle, right? And we know the circles are in Neurographica uh, is one of the, the circle in Neurographica is one of the main figures. And also it's me, that's what your child would say, and mommy, and mommy. And just I'm showing the example of how you can do it, mommy. Right, and you sitting, um, I'm just trying to adjust the setting because I think it mirrors and it's not exactly what I'm trying to do here. Oh, perfect. I have a good setting now. So, 
or that's that's the simplest way of doing it and that's what we're going to be doing today but let's say if you have more than one child right kids can sit together let's say like olga she has two children uh a boy and a girl right it's me and my brother let's say a child can draw her brother or his brother or sister right i'm just using example of olga mommy and daddy daddy right can be done like that if there is a grandma and grandpa 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 and then grandmother you see what happened so everyone in the family can be put into this field of relationship right i call it field of relationship where we could see who relates to who uh we can do diagnostic by looking even at this particular drone who is closer to each other in this case i just drew a closely knitted family where everyone is closely connected but i've seen cases when figures are far apart from each other or one figure could be small like this right it's me right for example and my brother <laughs> right so what it tells us when we see something like this when the the kid looks at the at her brother uh as a large figure in her life it's perfect uh, for small kids to have something like this but let's say if she's 20 years old right and her brother is let's say close to her age or even a little bit younger and if she draws something like this i would question it for small kids it's really perfect but for um, uh, uh, kids and their adults I, I would question this same with me and mommy right let me just show you what i've seen let me get more paper What I've seen here uh, in my practice, here's what's going on. Let me get something brighter also. Uh, sometimes we see a woman about 20 years old, right? She's already a woman, she's still a kid, or maybe she's 18. She draws herself like this, right? And then she draws her mother. First of all, you watch your kid sit together with your kid and see how a kid draws herself and then how she draws her mother in this case if she's a little kid it's acceptable why i'm saying it's not perfect because there is no crossing you see the figures are apart there might be some gap in relationship not necessarily not necessarily some kids love their space their own freedom they like to be focused on themselves in this case it's fine but in some cases what i see in my practice when kids draw figures that are not crossing each other specifically with their mothers right uh i would see what's going on there and there is no concern it's just we need to understand uh what is in this relationship um let's say for kids older right for small kids okay for older kids she's 18 or 20 or even she's even in her 16 i would say all say would apply she draws herself small and her mother is still a large figure for her right yes it's good her mother may be her inspiration maybe she draws a lot from her mother but also we need to watch for something else maybe mother has so much authority over her daughter the daughter feels so small right so it's a lot of things that we need to kind of like contemplate on and it may be um not necessarily as i said have any negative connotation but this is something that we're always watching for and let's say we're going to add daddy right and if daddy looks like this comparing to mommy even for small kids i would question that why daddy is so small so mother may have a huge authority in the family and that is almost invisible right something to watch for uh and let's say if we have a grandmother who is like this right the the larger figure in the family is a grandmother 
Maybe it's a person who's trying to glue family together. Maybe it, it is a person who uh, is actually greater in value for kid than anybody else in the family. So I'm just giving you some ideas for diagnostics of relationships. Even with small circles like this, you can already start a thinking process, contemplation, right? What's going on here? Um, and you could ask your child, like, why do you think grandma uh, so large in this drawing? What do you feel about grandma? Oh, grandma is great. She takes care of me. She feeds me. Uh, she plays with me. She takes me to trips. I think grandma is really a big person in my life. Why did you draw? Um, that is so small. Oh, you know, because daddy doesn't spend much time with me. Mommy spends most of time with me. That's why I drew my mother as uh, is a large figure. But daddy is always busy at work. Or we could have something different. We could say, oh, daddy, I drew daddy so small because daddy is so cute and, and sweet. And I like to play with him, but he's not as influential as my mom, right? So those things that we, we can... Uh, work through and talk to our kids in the in the fun way, right? Not making any concerns or not showing anything. Just asking questions, right? And for kids also, they uh, through this work, right? Even through simple circles like this, they can already see who relates to who in the family, right? And let's say a brother is here, the brother brother is here. We just only fight. That means. She's connected, the kid is connected with her brother, right? And everyone actually connected for grandmother. <laughs> I've seen things like that, and it's just a perfect way of do diagnostics in Neurographica. When we uh, draw circles and we see the relationship on the paper, who relates to who, who is larger, who is smaller, and uh, there is a way to adjust. There is a way to adjust. Uh, let's say, uh, that's the main figure here, right? I would say me, right? I'm a little girl, I'm seven years old. It's me, it's my big brother, my mother, my daddy, and my gran granny, okay? There is a way to adjust. Let's say she may realize she drew herself too small. So when she looks at the setup, she, she may say, oh, I don't even know why I drew myself so small. There is a way to enlarge in Neurographica. The way we do it, we just continue circling around, enlarging a figure just like that. She can enlarge herself. And then for coloring, all of this is going to go under color. And um, she's gonna, you could see like almost enlarge her like in twice. She's twice, almost twice bigger when she originally was. And that's how we can enlarge figures. Immediately, what's gonna happen inside of her when she does it, um, she's gonna feel more expanded. She's gonna feel more authority in the family. She would feel immediately then that she can speak up in the family more. So this is something that we should consider as well. And she may realize she drew daddy too small. She may enlarge daddy as well, right? It's very difficult to make figures smaller if you're using markers. But to enlarge figures is totally possible if you, if you need to do so. So I'm just showing you different ways. And again, it's just an introduction. Um, in the school, unfortunately, it's only in Russian at this point, but I'm pretty sure um, um, it's gonna be translated in English as well. And in our school, we do have a person who's gonna be specializing in um, work with kids. Um, there is a course specialist for kids specifically. Um, and, and they're teaching a lot of interesting things, how to work with kids, how to do diagnostics, uh, using simple figures, and how to establish a uh, connection between all family members, okay? So, but today we're gonna be doing just, you know, I'm just showing you the glimpse of that because we only have one hour, and um, uh, I just want to show you what you can already do with your kid. And again, I'm using very simple scenario, mother, daughter relationship. Adjusting my camera. Sometimes I need to put something bigger. Oh, all right. Let me just put something bigger, then it adjusts much better. All right. Oh, camera, please. Let's see. 
Hmm. There is a delay, apparently. Okay. All right. All right. So let's see what you can do. Let's say you sit together next to your child and um, I'm going to be that child, right? And my mommy tells me, uh, darling, let's just uh, draw some, let's just have some fun project, me and you. And I would say, yes, mommy, sure. I would like to do it. Like, what are we going to be doing? Oh, we're going to be drawing something. Let's see how we love each other. Let's see how we play each other. And the child is curious. Okay, mom, can you show me what we're going to be doing? Um, you could show first. You could draw those um, circles just to see. Oh, we could draw circles just to see um, how you feel, how I feel, how we can, how we're interacting together, how we can um, um, see the better ways of interaction. Maybe we can do something together. Let's just have that fun project. And then the kid uh, starts drawing, right? She draws herself. That's me, I'm a kid. I'm like, okay, mommy. And of course, don't expect a, a small child to draw a circle like that. Uh, it takes skills even for adults. Uh, in neurographica, what we're saying, we need to stay closer to the circular shape as much as possible because some people have tendency to draw eggs. Some people have tendency to draw ovals. What we're trying to do is to get to circular shape as much as possible, but kids, Small kids specifically, don't expect them to draw a perfect circle, which is okay. Just tell them, try to make it more circular. You can add more lines. Just draw over, right? To make sure that um, your circle looks more like circle. All right? That's me. All right. And now let's, let's draw mother, right? Let's draw uh, my mom. Okay. All right. Here's my mom. Here's my mom. My mom. All right, so she's gonna draw you. <laughs> her mom. Again, not, don't expect her to do a perfect circle. And next, what we could do, we could find like approximately a center of each circle, right? Just like that. And what we can do, we could, Okay, we're looking at this. You notice that they're not crossing. We talked about this, right? That um, the very uh, a close connection between child and parent, um, I would just need to mute newly people who just came. Um, we see that the figures are crossing, right? Here, figures are not crossing, and it's totally fine. It doesn't mean anything at this point, right? So let's see. And then you tell your child, using simple line. Let's see how we connect to each other. And then the child starts drawing. We usually start outside of the circle. <coughs> Sorry. And we're using neurographic line, right? For people who don't know what neurographic line is, is a bionic line that looks like a river. It looks like a crown of the tree. And that's what we, we teach our child, let's say, if child doesn't know how to do neurographic line, I would advise teaching your kid how to draw a neurographic line. It never repeats itself, right? If you notice, like, there is no pattern here. It also goes where we don't expect it to see. So the line just goes and it, connected, it, it, it is connected with uh, your breath, the person who draws, right? And it just uh, flows like a river. And you could uh, definitely teach your child how to do that, right? They don't do it perfectly. I notice small children uh, may not grasp the concept. Mostly what we see in small children, they still create patterns. It's okay. Here, the most important is just to see how you guys connect. You know what I see? Sometimes kid can't even bring the line across her mother. There is something I, I would really think about why, why she can. What she starts doing, she starts doing something like that. She connects herself with the universe, but what about my mom, right? Why, why, why would she just draw there? We really want to connect. We want to see how it works. And then you could ask her, how does it feel when you draw a line, right, that goes through you and comes to me, your mom? How does it feel? 
and she may say, oh, it's fun, it's cool. Uh, and, you know, you could, you could ask your child to name uh, any of those lines, right? When, when she draws like that, you could say, what are you drawing right now in this line? And she could say, um, I'm drawing mommy probably how much I love you. Oh, that's wonderful. You really want to hear it from, but don't give a hint to, to a kid. Just ask a kid, what exactly she's drawing? Oh, love. And, you know, word love comes um, uh, right on top of this line or maybe below, doesn't matter, as long as we see this word. All right, let's draw another line. Let's draw it. What else are you drawing, darling? Um, fun, fun, mommy, because we have so much fun together. I really want to draw fun. Wonderful, fun, okay? And that's how you, but you know, she may be a little bit uh, shy to say about anything. Maybe she feels something. Um, let's say if mother is working mother and she barely has time to spend time with her kid, kid, kid may not be able to express it, right? You could say, what, what would you wish to do more with your mom, right? And then she would say, oh, I wish, mommy, I wish you could play with me more. Aha, uh -huh. here's a sign, right, that we need to see. Play, play together, right? What else? I wish, mommy, you could cook more for me like grandmother does. I wish you could do that for me. Great, right? Cooking. Um, what else, darling? What else can we do together more? Oh, I like to go on play dates, mom. If you could come with me, I would love to go to play dates with you. That's how you do it, okay? And then you could say, let's see what mommy wants uh, uh, more to do with you. Let's see. Let's see how mommy feels. And then you could take it over from your child and draw from mom, mother's perspective, right? Oh, you know, darling, what I really want you to do to, let's say, if, if a kid doesn't bring her toys, right, to the right place. Oh, I wish we could um, clean up your room together um, and put all the toys in the right spots. I wish we could do that. Do you think we can make it fun together? In most cases, kids would say yes, totally, right? Uh, what else? Uh, I wish we could do together. Oh, you know what, darling? When we do pancakes in the morning, when I do pancakes for you, when I cook them, can you help me uh, making pancakes together? You think that would be fun? Oh, mommy, you know, I'm too small. I don't know how to uh, bake pancakes, but mommy will teach you. You know, you, could, you don't have to do the whole thing, but maybe you can help mixing. You can help measuring. Sure, mommy, okay? And that's how we do it. So your kid draw the part how she feels, uh, what she wants to do more with you. Maybe she, she may say, mommy, I want to get a pet. I want to get a pet. And you don't really want a pet in the family <laughs> because you already probably have three pets to take care of. And then she say, oh, mommy, yeah, I have uh, my dog and my, and my cat. Now I want to get a bird or a, a turtle or a snail or anything else, right? All right, darling, we will see how... We will see when would be the most perfect time to do that. And let's see, are you willing to take care of your pet? And she may say, can we do it together? Well, now you're getting perfect opportunity to get connected uh, to your child through another pet, or maybe uh, connected to your child for existing pets. Let's say, why don't we uh, go and walk our dog together? Uh, maybe you're the only one in the family who does it, but now with the kid together, it will teach your kid skills on how to deal with animals and so forth, right? But you're getting the idea. So my, my goal was just to get you an idea how you can work through. And here you can add family members and it can become endless uh, project. Dealing with the family members, seeing how they're crossing, right? If they're crossing, right away it's a perfect sign that heart-to-heart -heart connection is fully established if there is a small gap we should see what's going on why it's a small gap and what's going on right um if it's a huge gap let's say child draws herself somewhere here and mother is somewhere here that i would work more on establishing more close connection right 
uh, and again, when you adding your family members here, uh, and she's adding, oh, I want to add my brother here, and daddy, why we forgot daddy? Let's put daddy. To that's fine. Let her continue adding family members, and you can continue in the same fashion. If daddy's going to join the project, it's even better, right? Then you call your husband and say, hey, Sam, can you join? Can you help out? Um, uh, we want to see how we all communicate within the family. So you could turn it into the family project. Like in Olga's case, she's married, she has two kids, right? The whole family can uh, make it so much fun. Draw all four of them together, right? And see how they relate to each other. See where are they lacking certain points of interaction. And uh, who else should be added, right? I know in Olga's family, grandmother, um, uh, plays uh, um, a good role in the family. Maybe grandmother should be added and let's see how kids feel about grandma and even grandmother can be invited to the table to draw, right? Or to the floor <laughs> because kids love doing it on the floor, right? Together with their pet animals. All right, so what else can we do here now? Now all we need to do is to round the crossings and that's what we do in your graphic. Everywhere where we see the crossing, things should be rounded. Things should be round. The way we do rounding, let me just quickly show you for people who don't know, right? When we have some crossing lines, all we do is uh, we adding those half circles, just like that, and then we color. And we do it very neat. We do it very neat, just like that, right? You see, right here. And if for any reason you didn't do it neat and it looks a little bit like this, sloppy, a little bit we don't kill ourselves for that and the kids actually they have a tendency to do this for kids it's okay for small children right if she's 12 i would expect her to correct this right if she's below 12 it's fine L leave it like that you can help her to correct right and the way we do it we just thicken it we're thickening it at the point of um of the of, of the issue and that corrects it okay that's how you can correct it it's okay that the line becomes thicker at the root it's better to have it thicker than leave angles that are gonna hurt us when you see something like this it creates angular kind of a feeling and angles as we know in near graphic could be using triangles or any other angular uh, object in order to create an action in order to um um, create nouns that relate to actions like travel, right? Work. We all know that they're all connected to um, uh, some sort of action. So for that, we just need to smooth it out because we're not working here on any activities. We're more working on our inner connection with our child and we're helping child to understand how child relates to her mother, to her siblings, to her grandmother and even pets can be added here because pets also uh, part of family, right? Uh, so what we need to do here, we need to round the way I showed you. We are rounding not only crossings of the lines, but also crossings of figures, just like that. And in your graphic, usually we try to round as much as possible. Uh, if it's not algorithm of removing in limitations, I have people here who study at this point, this algorithm. Uh, if it's a modeling algorithm, we expect around 80% of rounding. Where in therapeutical algorithms, we expect 100% of rounding. You know, sometimes we're saying 80% uh, for algorithm of removing of inner limitations, but we end up having more than that. That's why I say try, strive to do 100%, not in this algorithm, therapeutical one, and you'll get your 80. Here I'm saying 80% in order for you to get 75 or 70%, right? Because no matter how hard you try to round everything, what I've noticed in my practice, people miss certain uh, rounding points. So by rounding, and you can round together with your child. Let her round and you round as well. Also, what it does, it creates a, really neurologically what happens. Your, uh, when she rounds, 
her part, right? It, it uh, makes her to absorb whatever happened on the paper on the field of drawing much better, right? And you working on your part here. And then you guys can say, say okay, let's switch. Let me round a little bit your part and you round my part. Neurologically, uh, what happens, we're creating new ne uh, neurological connections here. And if you name them love, play together, maybe travel together, have fun, bake some pancakes, cook together, walk your paths, clean the house together, um, maybe go shopping together, right? When you create this pattern, it becomes a pattern of love. And neurologically, when you're gonna be looking uh, at this drawing, it's gonna reflect back to you for the mirror neurons. All of us have mirror neurons. Uh, and humans, we are all part of, of the tribe, although in modern society, uh, we're all attached to our phones and computers and so forth, but we're still not losing the human touch at this point. Hopefully it's not gonna happen in the future that people totally uh, start getting disconnected from each other. But here what happens, we're really looking at this drone with all the surroundings together with your child, or maybe the entire family is gonna be looking at the drone. It creates a new field of love. It empowers you. It reflects back to you, to your children, to your uh, grandparents, uh, your, your children's grandparents. Uh, it reflects back as a field of love and activities, creates new neurological connections. If, if the family is a perfect family where everyone relates so well together, right? Um, if they already have a lot of fun together, if they already, uh, do a lot of activities together. It's going to empower them even more. It's going to reactivate, reinforce the neuro neurological connections in order to continue, in order to even further improve the relationship. Okay? And that's why neurographica is very important here because through neurographica, we are basically working on our neurons. And people sometimes questioning me, are you telling me that through this simple practice, of drawing the shapes and lines, you can actually change your life. You can actually uh, work therapeutically through relationship issues, or you can empower your kids to do better uh, um, job at school, in the house. You make them uh, start to clean their rooms. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. And the more you draw together, the more um, um, you creating certain lines where you define activities together. All, all the way, not only for the child to her parent, but also for the parent to her child. And also if you have siblings from siblings to child, to another sibling, guess what? You are building your family for the better future. You're really setting um, a perfect environment where everyone can interact in the most positive way. Okay? And we continue rounding. Of course, we have limited time. We're not gonna be able to finish rounding. And what you can do next when, let's pretend uh, it's all rounded and my idea is not to finish the drone. My idea is to give you understanding of what you can do with this simple method using small album, right? Um, how you can already start working with your child and establishing connection. And you really need to be thoughtful on how you present it without any blame or like, let's say, darling, you're not cleaning your room. That's why we need to establish connections so you start cleaning. This is not going to work. More from the positive perspective of love. Yes, I think we can do it together, right? Let's do it together. I think it's going to be so much fun. And then the child will get used to this. And then lately, uh, later after you guys are going to be doing it together, she's going to be starting doing it herself. She will establish enough of neuron connections in her brain in order for her, when she cleans up, it brings sweet memories of her and her mother doing it together. And then uh, all you need to do is just to select certain colors, the warm colors here, like pink is the color of heart, right? Pink quartz, uh, we know it's used. So if it's a girl, it's nice to have a pink color, right? And be using girls example. And you just start coloring. And the way we color in Neurographica, we are trying to color several segments and what we call segment is just uh, a piece of drone, right? Right here. Every piece that we see that is enclosed in the boundaries of the marker becomes a segment. And all you need to do is once you round everything, right? 
is to start coloring. And the coloring, uh, the way you could color, you could actually, with the color, create larger figures. And look what I'm doing here. I'm creating a pink quartz flow of love that's coming from your child to you. You see that? That's what I'm doing here. And it can go through you, can start even here somewhere, right? And you need to be, when you color together, try to be neat. Okay, and just go over. You see what happened here? What happened when I started doing it? I created a flow of love. And it goes from your child to you. You could do the other way around using different color. You could use red probably, right? And create something like this. We're going a little bit over time because I think it's important to emphasize this, that if you're using word of love, it's nice to use bright color like red or maybe bright orange, right? And you know, with using colors, colors also encoding certain emotions, certain understanding. Um, to, um, to our drone. And we're gonna look at love and see what love and see the red color right away. The reaction, of, we have a body reaction, we have emotional reaction, right? And when we finish coloring, the entire uh, drawing, you can color outside, you can add more lines just to connect with the universal powers, right? We, we know in your graphica, the uh, edges of your paper they not the end of your drones because everything goes beyond that. Everything goes to the quantum world of possibilities. So you could always add more paper on each end of your drawing and continue and continue and use your colors and use your uh, lines and then color in a way. You can even add some neurographic art here. You wanna add some stars, do it. Do anything possible in order to bright up bring up the positive um, outcome of the drawing, right? Um, what else you could do when you finish the whole coloring, what you could do, uh, you could do something what we call the field lines. The field lines really uh, sending the whole message shown on the paper to the universe. And usually they go across, we using some marker, right? Uh, close uh, by color to the entire, uh, color pattern, right? And it goes just like that. From the left to the right, mostly, we're using it, they can cross. What we're doing here by using these lines, they, those lines have a high voltage charge. What we're saying, let the universe uh, accept what's going on here on this paper, and let the universe to work through us in order to establish everything what we encoded to this drone to the real life. We're always using um, field lines in neurographica, although we're saying it's optional, right? Uh, my students and I myself try to use it as much as possible because it really amplifies, it really empowers you to get faster results, okay? So that's why I would suggest using field lines as uh, many times and as many drawings as possible, although we count them as option, right? Um, so that's how you would finish it with the, with the lines. And uh, they require some rounding, not 100%, right? If they're crossing, I would round them. I would round them a little bit with other lines and objects. And that would complete the drawing, okay? And I would love to see your drawing to be posted to the group, right? Um, Neurographic Americas has two groups and two languages. I hope in the future we're gonna have more languages for Neurographic Americas. One of them that I'm targeting is Spanish language. We have a woman who speaks Russian, English, and Spanish, which is fantastic. Uh, but right now only two languages, Russian and English. Please post in the English group. I'd like to see what you worked on. I'd like to see what was the outcome of your drawing. If you have any questions, Please reach out to me, reach out to Olga. Olga's got beautiful programs in Antinanka. They travel, they travel to Japan, they travel to Cuba, they travel to different countries together with kids. It's amazing, totally. 
They do woodwork classes in New Jersey. Um, so Olga is a wonderful resource for anyone who wants to um, get uh, connected with our community, who wants to empower uh, children, right? To give them skills of survival, to give them skills and exp uh, to expose them to the rest of the world, right? Uh, and with Neurographica, Neurographica Americas, please join us. Um, uh, we have more classes coming up in um, March and also April and May. The whole semester we're gonna be teaching um, and then we're gonna break for summer and reconnect back in September for the fall semester. Uh, I'd like to thank everyone and you have a wonderful St. Patrick's Day and please share as i said and olga thank you very much i really appreciate you joining us uh with your wonderful antinanka presentation at school not all schools have walls not all schools we totally share this concept thank you so much everyone have a fantastic day <laughs>